Focusing on torture as a neuroscientific problem changes your perspective entirely about what uh, the use of torture is about. What we can say uh, with certainty is that imposing extreme stressors on the brain, things like sleep deprivation, starvation, freezing, actually militates against the gathering of reliable and veridical information. And what we know in humans is that when you impose extreme stressors on humans, such as sleep deprivation, if you starve a person, if you bring them to the point of near death through repeated suffocation, that uh, we drive activity uh, in the brain away from brain areas that are concerned with memory, concerned with cognition, uh, toward brain areas that are concerned with immediate survival. My interest in this area came actually from a reading of uh, memos that have now become infamous, uh, the so-called torture memos, uh, where lawyers in uh, the then uh, George Bush uh, government articulated reasons why, on behalf of the CIA, it would be appropriate to use what were euphemistically referred to as enhanced interrogation techniques, a term actually given to us originally by the Gestapo. If you want to induce post-traumatic stress disorder in somebody, it's a, a very, very good way of doing this is to shackle them, to starve them, to near drown them, and to do so repeatedly. Um, if you want to get good information from people, this is not the way to proceed. Good interrogators, first of all, uniformly repudiate torture as a method of proceeding. What we need is to take interrogation out of uh, the coercive realm, and we have to think of it as being much more akin to a psychological or a psychiatric interview, uh, where we're dealing with people who are in difficult circumstances, but nonetheless, uh, they must be treated in an ethical and humane fashion.